The success of Artemis 1 launch has propelled NASA's SLS to become the most powerful rocket ever to orbit, but its crown cannot endure forever. After over a decade of construction, SLS has revealed its inefficiency and sluggishness due to an outdated and cumbersome technical program. At this point, if we were to choose a candidate to replace LS, it can only be SpaceX's Starship. But why? Let's find out in today's Alpha Techs episode. Why is Starship so much better than NASA's SLS? The Space Launch System is a federal government endeavor aimed at developing a super heavy lift vehicle with the capability to launch large payloads in space. The program that contractors are currently working on for NASA originated as a way to salvage technology and employment opportunities from two other canceled programs. The subsequent issues faced by SLS also stem from this origin. President Barack Obama's decision to terminate the Constellation program led to bipartisan discontent in Congress. In exchange for the commercial crew program, NASA committed to constructing a heavy lift rocket, thus giving rise to the space launch system utilizing technology and components from both Constellation and the Space Shuttle. The primary intent was not only to just launch payloads in space, but also to provide employment opportunities for constituents and fat contracts for campaign contributors. Why are they called fat contracts? NASA employs a cost-plus contracting approach with its contractors, which essentially involves providing funds for the project and covering any additional costs that exceed the budget. However, this funding mechanism does have its drawbacks, as it provides little incentive for contractors to adhere to schedules and budgets. Delays often result in increased compensation for contractors. NASA's been spending approximately $1.5 billion of the taxpayers' dollars annually since 2011 on SLS development. Despite assuring contractors of ample resources within reasonable budgets, suspicions arise about potential irregularities behind the scenes. The main contractor for the SLS project is Boeing, which has received the majority of the project's funding. On the other hand, Starship emerged as an innovative endeavor conceived within the visionary realm of SpaceX. In fact, SpaceX's history with super heavy vehicles begins with Tom Muller, one of the company's first employees and a propulsion engineer by profession. In the mid-2000s, Muller bought a BFR rocket engine at his rocket club, the Reaction Research Society. However, the BFR vehicle didn't gain any popularity until 2012 when Elon hinted that a huge rocket called the Mars Colonial Transporter would soon become one of SpaceX's major vehicles. Finally, Elon revealed that SpaceX's plans during the 2016 International Astronautical Congress Summit, originally named the Interplanetary Transport System, or ITS, it was later changed to BFR in 2018 before Musk renamed it as Starship. Elon's leadership and the company's history of successful endeavors, including the Falcon 9, have positioned SpaceX as a pioneer in space exploration and laid the groundwork for the audacious design of the Starship. Although SLS was planned in 2010, earlier than Starship, which was merely just a concept back then, it still had enough foundation to be compared with SLS and even Falcon Heavy. The initial effort aimed at a heavy lift orbital vehicle and nearly comparable with payload capacity to those lunar rockets. If you've been following SpaceX from its early days, you surely can't forget the statement made by former NASA Administrator Charlie Bolden back in 2014 when he sarcastically commented on the Falcon Heavy rocket. Let's be very honest. We don't have a commercially available heavy lift vehicle. The Falcon 9 Heavy may someday come about. It's on the drawing board right now. SLS is real. The result was that Falcon Heavy was successfully launched in 2018. It's now five years later, and its successor, the Starship, is almost ready. As you can clearly see from both histories, SLS was created as a government-incentivized program with the aim of collaborating with international space agencies and generating employment opportunities, whereas Starship was constructed as an innovative project to revolutionize space travel. In a transformative industry like this one, innovation is everything. In the context of innovation, let's delve into the distinct features of Starship and SLS. Starship's impressive stature reaches 120 meters, making it the tallest rocket among all the rockets in the world. This propulsion system employs a combination of liquid oxygen and methane to generate high-speed hot gas, resulting in an astonishing 17 million pounds of thrust during launch. This thrust is twice as powerful as the thrust capability of SLS. Notably, SpaceX's Starship is fully reusable a goal nearly all modern-day rockets pursue. In contrast, 
SLS can't be reused in any capacity, leading to infrequent launch potential as well as high costs for redeveloping an entire rocket from scratch. Furthermore, NASA's development approach for the SLS follows a traditional product development path. It involves a lengthy period of sequential linear stages. While this may ensure continuity, it also consumes a massive amount of time. Sustainable space exploration might demand something bigger, better, faster, and more cost-effective. NASA doesn't seem to provide on that front. On the other hand, with SpaceX, you'll notice that failure is seen as a success. The mindset is to fail quickly and find solutions rapidly. SpaceX teams don't formulate strategies for months on whether something will work or not. They experiment, they fail, they observe, and then they iterate. They continue to test and refine until a robust working model is achieved. Elon even celebrates rocket explosions and emergency landings. He knows that these missteps yield insights that lead to eventual success. This iterative approach has allowed SpaceX to gain the upper hand as they repeatedly iterate toward an innovative design for deep space travel that's faster and much more cost-effective. In contrast, NASA doesn't embrace much risk with SLS. While SpaceX is testing components, materials, and processes, NASA's utilizing parts and design blueprints from previous models for manufacturing. Right now, SpaceX is preparing for its second launch this year, whereas SLS continues to face multiple delays and challenges. It remains uncertain whether it can meet the deadline for Artemis II. Is SpaceX the suitable choice for more replacement? Evidently, the allure of Starship extends beyond reusability, encompassing cost-effectiveness and unprecedented capabilities that set it apart as a superior choice compared to SLS. Currently, the space launch system costs about $2 billion to launch. Meanwhile, Elon's predicted that Starship may cost as little as $10 million a flight and a launch hundreds of times before it even carries people. SLS aims to bring the cost down to $1 billion a launch. But who would want to spend a $1 billion to launch anything on NASA's monster rocket except for the space agency? The Space Force certainly doesn't want anything to do with space launch system. Colonel Douglas Pentecost, a senior rocket acquisition official with the Space Force, is quoted as saying, It's a capability right now that we, the DOD, don't need. We have the capability that we need at the affordability price that we have, so we're not interested in some partnership with NASA on the SLS system. It's not going to get any better in the future. The military and commercial customers have the Falcon 9 and the Falcon Heavy to launch payloads. Eventually, the SpaceX Starship will be able to toss heavy payloads into space at a fraction of the space launch system's cost. The SLS was years behind schedule and billions of dollars over budget before it launched the successful Artemis 1 mission. But Artemis 2, which will launch a crew of astronauts around the moon, will occur no earlier than late next year, two years after Artemis 1. Artemis 3, scheduled for no earlier than late 2025, a year after Artemis 2. Besides, the SLS is very challenging to build, another impediment to commercialization. NASA and Congress, which funds it and its programs, are faced with a painful choice. They'll continue to swallow hard and fund the space launch system. After all, Congress imposed SLS on NASA. Congress continue to insist that the heavy lift rocket will be part of the Artemis returns to the moon program, expenses be damned. This legislative body would be hypocritical to suddenly discover that the SLS is a money pit just at the moment when it's inclined to cut the federal budget. NASA continues to pay for unwise decisions made over a decade ago. This space agency needs to act sooner rather than later. Until Starship successfully flies, they'll have another option for their program. It won't be long. We'll soon witness how successful the Starship's going to be. And that's all for today's episode. Hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments below. Your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.